Welcome everybody to Salty Chillers Entertainment. This is Hero Darkness. This is Switch Numbers. This is Red Renegade. We have known it's been quite some time since we've done a podcast. Life for all of us has gotten a little crazy. I was just finishing up with schooling, so I was focusing more on schooling with that end. So my schedule is crazy. I can't speak for the other ones, but yeah, but we're hoping to be back in keep going at these podcasts and discussions um this one today is going to be uh different um i'll let rich actually introduce today's topic because he's the one that came to us about one to discuss it we're like yeah sure let's let's discuss it so i'll let him be the one that inter- be introducing today's topic today's topic is actually a little different we're going to talk more about esports and sports sort of the differences well the similar and sort of why is one seem more popular over the other one because gaming is a thing so why is it that a game is sort of shown with sporting but yet a physical game that can cause a lot more injuring is sometimes more acceptable Yeah, it is interesting to note the difference between, you know, electronic sports or esports as it's shorthanded versus what I'm going to call traditional sports. So then I guess the question is, why is it that it's okay to turn on the TV and watch people, you know, tackle each other, kick a soccer ball around, dribble a basketball or play lacrosse or, you know, number of other things as well insert sports ball here yes <laughs> insert sports ball sports ball here why is that more socially acceptable to watch that than it is to watch esports or maybe i'm just wrong altogether and it's just the popularity difference it could be a popularity difference, but also people may see video games as more of a like a leisurely thing to do. Like, not as they don't think of it as high stakes competitive, like how some other people see it as. I sort of see that. As so we are, at the end of the day, we want to play games to relax and unwind and more for a hobby instead of I'm going to be the best. No one ever was. Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just interesting of how it works, and I don't have any like firsthand experience with playing esports. But my last year of college, my two roommates were on the school esports team. Now, the school, give me a moment, sorry. So the school, they uh, were super hesitant on wanting to allow esports to actually be like a thing because their first thought is, when you hear esports and you think of gaming, what's the first thought that comes to mind? Uh, Well, the first thing that comes to my mind is actually like, the like sports games like uh uh like your basketball sports games football like actual like video games sports of that mhm yeah, yeah. The also thing, think that like, comes to my mind when you think of that is you know when you lose you get all the rage anger hate people punching balls You get all that salt and rage, which isn't always the best to deal with. I'm looking at you, League of Legends. The biggest salt mine of all. But since I also went to the exact same college, I also know the reasons why they were hesitant. But I'll let you explain that. So, part of the reason why the school was hesitant on accepting or wanting more... Um, accepting esports it's because all they see is oh they're just going to be spending their time playing games and not going to be doing their homework especially video games okay question now how is that different 
than me spending my evening running drills to play football or to play soccer or to play rugby or to play lacrosse. And, you know, how is that different? Because, because you have you to practice. Well, well depends, depends on the game, you know. Here they are at that's Jackson College giving everybody a iPad. They can spend in class playing that said game. game. Just my thought. Yeah, because, you know, everyone in the, at, at this university has a tablet. And so they can be mobile gaming the entire time in class. But to bring it back, so, uh, Renegade, you were going to say, you were saying something about, you know, the sports and how they're sitting there practicing well, and playing. Well, it was, yeah, it was, uh, the that's something different. Well, not different about esports and regular sports is you need to practice in order to be good at said thing. Like, like obviously, the more you play, the better you get. Yeah, and it's, that's just kind of true across the board. Yeah. yeah. The, more the more you play, the better you are, and with, with it being quote unquote esports. Like it was it being esports, they can find a game similar to it and play in class. Just to know, with this secular argument, I'm being not paying attention to class, playing a game very similar to the one I'm going to be competing with, and sort of stop following my classes. And the university that was the biggest uh, concern with the esports, and which is why I kind of laugh, is that they're afraid that the students on the esports team want to be performing well in their class versus those that are playing an actual sport now here's a question for both of you do you think that the athletes that play traditional sports do you think they're more tired or exhausted after their practice and after the games compared to those that are practicing for their esports I could see the reason behind that because the a lot more physical. Yeah, it's a lot more movement of the body. So with that, they would be more tired. So shouldn't making them sleeping in class. So then we shouldn't be be allowing um. you know, traditional sports in school because the students may be exhausted after their practice and so they can't fun uh, perform be performing well the next day in class. And it so we should... the type of practice. If they're pushing themselves, then they'll be more exhausted. But if it's like, let's take track and field, a simple run for a couple miles, not so much. Well, here's the thing every sport has conditioning you have to condition yourself before anything else that is true if you're not conditioned you won't perform well whatsoever and they have so if me jumping in football in college would have been a whole lot because i'm not conditioned i would have been sleeping through class the entire time but even if you played high school uh, football you're still going to be tired because you're still playing and you're still doing that stuff and do you guys think you could be the same way with the esports and what's going on there because you know with both traditional sports you got to watch film esports you're still got to watch film there's still a lot of mental game that goes mm -hmm. on i feel the feet sports is a lot more mental than than anything else So that is something my, my thought is, esports is way more mental than physical. So it could be more mental draining, which can still have the exact same problem, that's what we're sort of mm. saying. The, instead of sleeping, they, they'll be more mentally tired in class, not paying attention, than actually sleeping, or like the sports ideal for the sports players would be. What's your thoughts, Renegade? Uh, 
I believe that esports it it can be more mentally tiring, but if you look at it compared to regular sports, it mentally being tired takes a lot longer to get there than physical. Physical can be like an hour or two, mental could be like three to four. So if like say uh we'll use it as an example, same person, two different scenarios, plays esports, plays sports, he's gonna get tired faster obviously working his whole body while playing esports using that mental capacity, he could still have some time to like actually get studying done and like be prepared for class and all that stuff. A random thought that came to my mind is um how long would it take someone to become tired for playing a game of chess all day? Till the brain finally gets fried. Like and a... Like just a... Board game, chess. Because that's oh, also very okay. mental. Mm -hmm. how, how long would that take? I'm actually quite curious. How long could someone who's professional play chess... It also depends on like how invested you are in said thing as well. That is like... true. If you, have, if you practice enough and have the mental capacity... Having the... Yeah, just like how when regular athletes will uh, work their muscles out and all that so then they can go longer, do better. It's the same for eSports, their mental capacity. It, they raise it, they can go longer. You know, I feel like the reason why, um, you know, yeah, you gotta exercise in that so you can play longer, go longer, play harder, play smarter. And, you know, with the traditional sports, they still have that mental aspect as well. You wanna know how tough it is. You know, here you are. I, I played rugby in that, and I'm in the match, and it's the 50th minute out of like 80, okay? Or we're 70 minutes in, and here we are. We get the penalty, and the guy goes to me, he's like, We're doing a horseshoe. And I'm like, Crap. What's horseshoe play again? <laughs> Alright? But that also comes from fatigue. Well, exactly. So, and then now picture yourself here you are, you're playing, you know, League of Legends and that, and your team, you're just getting pounded and pounded, you know, bottom lane's lost, mid lane's lost, and the team's pushing in, and your captain or whatever calls, like, let's go push Baron, and you're just like, I have no idea if we can pull this off. Yeah. yeah. I completely see that. Um, now, just to explain what I'm talking about, and for those who aren't familiar with League of Legends, League of Legends has three different lanes, top, middle, bottom lane, and then Baron is this uh, creature that gives the, a buff to the entire team for a short while. And getting Baron, depending on how the match is going, can turn the tide of going from a loss to a win. Now, there's a lot of other factors that has to go into it, but Baron is one of those can be one of those crucial moments depending on how the match is going that you can go from a loss to a win. Make or break. It it, it, it could literally be a make or break because if your team's prevented from getting Baron, and if you don't have a good backup strategy, you're not gonna pull off the win. Now this is where things are gonna become interesting with how our conversation is gonna pull because Rich was talking to me in that and he was looking at the numbers. So we're first going to be talking about athletes, then we're going to talk about professional esports. So, football and basketball, which athlete do you think gets paid more? Paid more? I would say football. That was legit my first thought. I'm going to be honest. My first thought was, is going to be football because everybody, everybody watches football. No, basketball. Wait, what? Basketball gets played more. You can get paid more. Basketball players get paid more, and you know you t we t we took a look at the numbers. I don't remember the numbers are out of hand, but football you get paid on you get paid so much you know thousand dollars, millions of dollars, or what what not, um, per game that is played. Well, football players can only handle really one game a week, so they only get, they only get that one game. In football, you know you have. I want to say 16 to 20 weeks worth of football right in there. And so you're looking between, oh, 
12, 16 games a season. Because you got like a couple bye weeks in there where you're not playing. So you're not playing, you're not getting paid. If I understand that all correctly. So... <laughs> Um, football players made, I found my numbers, 2.9 mil, while basketball players got paid 7.7 .7 mil on average. Mm -hmm. And so in that same week with basketball players, you can get three, four games in a week compared to that one game with football. And I think there's more basketball teams than football teams. I'm not... I'm not sure. I didn't look into that. And so you get that. Now, what do you guys think? Rich will have the numbers right here, but I'm going to ask Renegade. How much do you think a professional esports player or athlete gets paid? Professional esports or athlete? Um, let's see. Okay, so an actual sports player gets like. Three mil. So let's take it down. Maybe a million. I'll say not a million. Even, it's not even that. You, you're giving him a lot more credit and a lot more what you uh, what <laughs> a lot more money than what they actually get. Because uh, on average, a legal legend player makes about three thousand, three hundred twenty thousand. Before the fire's money, Professor Overwatch player makes fifty thousand a year. So I'm gonna ask you something, Renegade. Have you heard of lacrosse? Yes, I know a good bit about lacrosse. How much pro lacrosse players can make between ten thousand twenty-five, twenty-five thousand dollars a year? So, so lacrosse players, players on average makes what a professional esports player could end up actually making, which I found quite interesting. Here they are making, because I got looking into it before the price and all that stuff, they get paid between three thousand to five thousand dollars a month before the price money, and that's not including the money they make through through Twitch or the streaming streaming when they're not practicing. So esports player makes less than what professional sports players make, but most of the money they make comes from the prize money f through the tournaments. Which I thought was quite interesting. It's the fans and all that stuff ends up paying the esports players the good amount of money. Now I got another question, and then we'll get going on a little more with the discussion. Who do you think between esports or the Super Bowl, which one do you think has more viewers? Uh, I'm going to have to say Super Bowl on this. They make it into a big event and everything. Uh, a lot of new commercials are being advertised. Like, everyone should be watching it. Well, Riot does the same thing whenever you play League. They're like, yo, <laughs> matches are going on. Uh, you earn XP or here's a bonus thing. If you complete this weekly mission by watching three games and that from the Pro League. Um, what's interesting is, once again, your assumption is wrong. <laughs> esports championship or esports games generate more viewers than the Super Bowl. But again, this is worldwide instead of just the United States. The Super Bowl got about, last year, 98.2 mil. While the Legends, consecutively each match was about 44 mil, but the final match had 100 million people watching. My so gosh. The championship game had a hundred mil, while the Super Bowl game, which is also a championship game, had how much again, Rich? Super Bowl was ninety eight. Ninety eight mil versus a hundred what? Versus about a hundred mil. <laughs> now keep in mind esports players league are making maybe maybe thirty thousand dollars a year before prize money. Yeah. 
granted the esports League of Legend is a uh, more international sports so rich could you real quick take a look on how many people watch the championship game for both FIFA and Rugby World Cup I think I have that written no I don't have that written down yeah so means... we go so go take a look so Renegade your thoughts on on what we just you know the those numbers that we just saw. I find it incredible that actually more people watch uh, like the championship of league than the Super Bowl because you don't get that much well obviously like advertisement on television about that yeah yeah I think okay, the only place that you probably see it advertised would be on like if you were playing league or something like that that just means a lot of okay. people like all the people play league so quick search in Google it says more than a about 857 million people watched the tournament for the 2019 Rugby World. Still didn't even come close. So that's more than the League of Legends. And you said FIFA? Yeah, but still at that, you know, the that is just crazy. And FIFA had about one point one billion. For the women's cup. One one point one billion. That is a seventh of the world's population. And that's the Women's Cup. That's the first thing that popped up on two. Gosh. Okay. So. Twelve point eight million viewers. Watch. We had over a. 157 million in their tournament. But we're looking at the final matches of World Cup, which, mind you, 12.8 million viewers. We championship game, 9 million of those that uh, watch the Super Bowl. Has Just sitting in front of a computer screen, the mouse word. That's my money. Do you catch all that, Red? No. <laughs> no. On my end, the hero was really breaking up, so I couldn't really catch a lot of that. Okay, so. Why is it then, since there's more people watching the esports, especially with League, or probably the same with Overwatch, just to name a couple, there's more viewers, but yet they're getting paid significantly less? My honest deduction of that is because of the physical risk. Because obviously, you're not going to get physically injured. While uh, protecting the middle lane, or the I don't know, my finger may break if I click too hard. <laughs> I chipped a nail. <laughs> uh, it's because the athletes are actually putting themselves out on that field, and they could potentially like lose their career. Like there have been some athletes that get like paralyzed, and then they have to—they're jobless basically. 
So you're saying risk equals reward? Yes. Do the risk at any moment they can get sent out because of that. Which, no, I sort of see that. That makes sense. That's because of what I'm doing, there's a greater chance of it hurting more, thus we get paid more. But I'm now quite curious though, out of all these people, I should have done the research but I just came to my mind, is how many of them actually ends up going bankrupt from how much money they make and not know how to spend the money. I don't think it's so much bankrupt, I think it's how much they go into debt. Because the, cause we don't think a lot of times when we go make that purchase for that car or for that TV or for this house, how much money it's going to cost until we get it paid off. Mm -hmm. And one day you're just like, whoops, forgot to pay that, and then... Goodbye. Well, you know, if that's the case, you know, um, if you're thinking that, oh, they're one move they can get paralyzed and end of their career well then some sports should be getting paid a lot more because of that risk then football players should be getting paid a lot more than basketball because football is a much higher contact sport compared to basketball but they're not so I think the other thing that goes into that contributes to the pay difference is sponsorship and who's sponsoring yeah. them yeah, because I think one reason why esports isn't talked a lot about, 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 about if I can speak if I can speak today, is probably because the way the media makes video games looks like it's evil, it's bad, well, it causes violence. But yet we look at the professional players who play for a living, who are literally just ramming themselves into one another. <laughs> Yeah, we are ramming ourselves into one another with our avatar characters. That is so dangerous. But you look at the person behind the controller, they're not violent people whatsoever. Oh. They may get frustrated and mad, but they don't go out doing crazy stuff. At least not to my knowledge. I watched this video. It said, gaming doesn't causes rage lag does <laughs> I mean lag can contribute but sometimes you get that one person that runs the complete like crash build and then you get kind of upset about that because you know that was the reason why they won I shall play Dark Souls with no armor and no weapons And then join your server and watch you die when you get invaded. Right. <laughs> but no, that is actually something interesting. There's stuff along that line. It's just what causes such things. If we think about it, yes, the pro league and all this stuff. You have very violent sports you watch. But we enjoy watching them. You have Overwatch. That's a very violent game. We're shooting people for fun in the game. But football, we're now doing a contact sport. Well, rugby is also very contact sports, but people get hurt more. Actually, rugby, I believe, is more contact than uh, football, right? Yes. There are so between rugby and football, there's more uh, there's more concussions in rugby than there is in football. Yeah, because, because they don't have uh, like padding or anything for protection. Well, there's that, but you also it's not a fair comparison because you have one country that's playing football, whereas you have multiple countries and a bigger player base that's playing rugby. That is also true. But the thing is, though, with rugby, you have 
tackling guidelines. You can actually get yourself carded out of a game if you do what's called a dangerous tackle, where you lift the person's legs above their waist. You do very dangerous tackles. Your arms go up above their shoulders onto their necks. When you tackle, all of that stuff will result in a warning card penalty or p removal from the uh, from the game and so I think at the end of the day reason why and I think Rich was right on why esports isn't covered as much is because all they see is oh they're just wasting their time playing games and it's just more of a hobby pastime or yeah. how the media pr portrays gaming and how it's just this big evil scary thing and we should just like reject it when you know some of the sports that we like to watch can be just as violent and just as dangerous if not more dangerous because shall i point out hockey <laughs> where some people literally have fist fights <laughs> Hockey, I think it's one of the more violent sports more than football because of that. They break out in fights. But that's not to say that fights don't happen in football because a few years ago you had the big rival game that happened on Thanksgiving between Mississippi State and Old Miss and a, fist f and a fight broke out between the two. So you can still have stuff like that happening. And so I think it's just how the public views and it's just like they view gaming as a pastime and hobby and that and it shouldn't <clears throat> and so people shouldn't get it's paid for doing they don't conceive it as competitive sports yes and I think that's why they don't get as much and they have to, and why they have to rely on so much of other stuff in order to uh, in order for them their things that they're after And so I think we, you know, for those that like to gain, need to work on help shaping the general public's view that gaming isn't as bad as people make it out to be. That is true. So I'm curious, Renegade, what did you bring to the table? Well, one esports community that I know that can be very big is uh, the Smash community. I tried uh, to get info on the Smash, but I could not find anything. Well, the obviously they have their own small base and stuff. Uh, and they don't really, per se, do like two gigantic groups obviously now in the new smash you know how you can have like what was it eight people in a match do that but they how smash usually works they do 1v1 yeah well i think one ones and you can have 2v2s yeah you can also do uh teams of two yeah forgot about that but a lot of your pro Smash players are known from the one, uh, 1v1s and what goes on there. And because the normal rules are it's either three stocks or four stocks depending on the tournament in play. And so I, I think it's at the end of the day, it's just how the public has been conditioned to think yeah. of gaming, which is why the pay isn't as high, the sponsors aren't there because they view it as too big of a risk to... Um, sponsor and go into esports and so yeah that's uh it's the reality that we have to deal with especially if you want to go into esports and want to go pro gamer it's you gotta hope that the team that you're with is especially if it's a team-based game that your team is going to be able to pull some of that prize money so you can afford your next uh payment That is true. Now, something I thought about a little bit. Here we are. How long football has been around for a couple of generations? About a generation now, thus it's easier to get into because you know the rules.
we want to introduce esports, we have to then have people then start to understand the game for it to stop people to get into it. Yeah, because it's still fairly new compared to like the giants of uh, football, basketball, hockey, baseball, all the other. Yes. Like compared to that, uh, it's very new for everyone to perceive. Maybe eventually one day we will get to that point where we're just like, oh yeah, this is a competitive thing. Yeah, because it's a bit more seriously. There, there, there's a TV show on Netflix. Um, sorry, everyone, you're going to have to watch it in the Mandarin. There, it does not have, at this moment, any other language to it other than the Mandarin. It's called The King's Avatar, and it's based off of, like, a web, uh, web comic in that. But basically, in short, this part of the world, you know, has the media and the following with the esports team, and it's so it's just as big, and people care about what's going on in the esports with this game as compared to um, the other sports. And so we may eventually reach that uh, state, but it's going to definitely take a few years because football's been around for 100 years. Same thing with rugby and that. And so it's just going to take some time for, for it to actually gain any traction and for the public opinion to change on what actually it, that it's actually not that bad as we think it is. Do you guys have any closing thoughts or anything on our uh, topic? Yeah, I just agree with that. Like, it, it's going to mainly deal with the player base, how we go forward with this, to see how we can make this be known more publicly to the general, how, hey, we are actually passionate about this. We want to do this as a career. They can get that funding and keep doing what they're doing. They can eventually get up to, like, uh, as popular and worldly known as the football, basketball, stuff like that. I, I, that. <laughs> I promise you, you go talk to your father right now and you mention League of Legends, going to be like, what is that? League of Legends, Dota 2, Overwatch. Yeah. Rocket League. Rocket League. Rainbow Six Siege. Yeah. Oh, Rich, do you got any other thoughts that you want to contribute? Besides that, esports isn't, you know, just the football and basketball and hockey games, like professional like, which would be surprised if that is actually a thing. It can be actually quite enjoyable to watch. If you get the right people commentating, then actually explaining what's happening, esports can become a big thing, something that can work. It's just going to take years to get up there where the other major sports are at. While the coronavirus is happening at this time, if you think about it, the esports community is not really too much affected by it because they can keep the social distance sitting and still play the games no problem whatsoever. You, you can easily space all their uh, computer monitors six feet apart everything else and so keep going now i will challenge everyone um to watch a professional match because the commentating for that is awesome and fun to listen to and mm -hmm. so it can be quite hilarious yes so yeah i think esports is definitely on the rise to with the popularity it's definitely has a following definitely has a fan base it's just at this point in time the social the the public uh, perception of it is in a positive light. I say as it keeps growing and keeps moving forward, it's only a matter of time that the esports players are going to be making just as much money on the esports level professionally as these other pro athletes are going. And so I think just you know let's just keep give it let's keep giving it a few more years and see what it's like in a few years. And so yeah, definitely everyone check out an esports. Just look up a insert game. <clears throat> Uh, esports game here uh, from the ones that we talked about, whether it's Super Smash for the commentary, League of Legends, Overwatch, Rocket League. Go to two. 
and just look at all that stuff. And so, yeah. So, end of the day, I think the reason why esports isn't as popular or paid well is because sponsorship, sponsorship and I think it's just that right there. It's just the sponsorship that they're lacking is why they're not getting paid as much. So, moving forward, guys, we're hoping to keep the podcast going. We've also started streaming as well. Right now, currently, with our current stream schedule, we are streaming multiplayer games on Monday. We are planning, you know, we are doing Minecraft. Right now, we got Kingdom Hearts going on, and we're still working on another title game for our, our Friday streams. It's still in the works. And uh, feel free to keep on our look on our Twitter page of at Chili Salter or Salter Chillers. You can never keep it straight. And uh, I don't know what to call it anymore. And uh, you know, if there's a certain game that you want to see us play through or commentate on as we're playing through, let us know and we'll look into it. So and if you have anything you want us to talk about in podcast wise, also feel free to let us know. I'm glad to do a podcast about that. All right, so this has been Hero Darkness. Which numbers? Red Renegade. And as always, guys, stay salty.